Welcome back to Math Dogs. If you're new to the channel, please comment, like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Today's topic is formulas used in algebra. We have 10 different formulas for you and an example of each one. Remember, we believe math is better with your dog, so call your pups. Let's get started. Problem number one is the slope formula. It says slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And the problem says find the slope of the line passing through the points negative 3, 5 and 3, negative 4. So I'm going to label my first point, which I will use negative 3, 5. So my first x coordinate is negative 3 and my first y coordinate is 5. And I'm going to call 3, negative 4 the second point. So my second x coordinate is 3 and my second y coordinate is negative 4. And now all I have to do is substitute. Slope is equal to y sub 2, which is my second y coordinate, is negative 4, minus y sub 1, my first y coordinate, which is 5, over x sub 2, my second x coordinate, which is 3, minus x sub 1, which is my first x coordinate, of negative 3. And I'm going to put that in parentheses because I have the negative from the formula and the negative from the coordinate. The opposite of a negative is a positive, or dash dash means plus. Now I'm going to simplify. Slope is equal to negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6. That fraction can be reduced by 3 over 3. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So my slope is negative 3 over 2. Problem number 2 is the midpoint formula. We're going to write a point where we add together the x-coordinates, x1 plus x sub 2, divide that by 2, and then we're going to add together the y-coordinates, y sub 1 plus y sub 2, and divide that by 2. The problem says find the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints of 6, negative 2, and negative 1, 4. So I'm going to call 6, negative 2 my first point, so this would be my first x-coordinate and my first y-coordinate, and I'm going to call negative 1, 4 my second point, and so that would be my second x-coordinate and my second y-coordinate. And now we're just going to substitute. The first x-coordinate is 6 plus the second x-coordinate is negative 1. Divide that by 2. The first y-coordinate is negative 2 plus the second y-coordinate is 4, and we're going to divide that by 2. So 6 plus negative 1, or 6 minus 1, is 5 over 2. And negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so my midpoint would be 5 halves comma 1. Problem number 3 is the distance formula to find the distance between two points. It says the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And the problem says find the distance between the points negative 6, 1 and 3, negative 5. So I'm going to call negative 6, 1 my first point. That would make negative 6 the first x-coordinate and 1 the first y-coordinate. And I'm going to call 3, negative 5 my second point. And so 3 is the second x-coordinate and negative 5 is the second y-coordinate. And now I'm going to substitute. So I would have the square root of the second x-coordinate is 3 minus the first x-coordinate is negative 6. So I have the minus from the formula and the negative on the 6. The opposite of a negative, or dash dash means plus, and so that would be 3 plus 6 squared plus the second y-coordinate is negative 5 minus the first y-coordinate is 1, and that will be negative 5 minus 1 squared. So now I'm going to simplify it. I would have the square root of 3 plus 6 is 9 squared plus negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 squared. And then I'll square each of those numbers. 9 squared is 81 plus negative 6 squared is 36. 81 plus 36 would give me the square root of 117. And now I have to see if I can simplify this square root, which I can because there's a perfect square factor of 9. And so the square root of 117 
is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 13. And since 9 is a perfect square, the square root of 9 is 3. So the distance between those two points would be 3 times the square root of 13. Problem number four is the quadratic formula. It says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And the problem says solve the following equation using the quadratic formula. 3x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So first we have to understand that the a, b, and c in the formula refers to the coefficients in the quadratic equation. a is equal to 3, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 3, since it comes from the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now that we know our values, we're going to substitute and simplify. So x is equal to the opposite of b, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, plus or minus the square root. b squared would be negative 2 squared minus 4 times a is equal to 3, and c is equal to negative 3, all over 2 times a and 2 times a is equal to 3. So now I'm going to simplify. x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared is 4, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and negative 12 times negative 3 is positive 36. In the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. So now I just have 4 plus 36 inside the radical symbol. 2 plus or minus 4 plus 36 is 40 over 6. So now I have to see if I can simplify the square root of 40. Is there a perfect square factor in the square root of 40? And there is. The square root of 40 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that would be 2 times the square root of 10. So x would be equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 10 over 6. And now I just have to see if I can reduce all three of these terms, the 2, the 2, and the 6, by a common factor, which would be 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, square root of 10, but I don't have to write the 1, over 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so x will be equal to 1, plus or minus the square root of 10, over 3. Problem number five is the simple interest formula. It says I equals PRT. And the problem says Cypress invests $8,500 at a rate of 4.5% for six years. Based on the simple interest formula, how much interest will she make on her investment? So I need to know what each of those is. So I have the formula I equals P R times R times T. And P is equal to the principal, that's the amount that's invested, and in this case, it's $8,500. R is the interest rate, which would be 4.5%, but we'll always write that as a decimal, so we'll move the decimal back two places, that would be 0 0.045. And T is the time in years, which is six. So I'm going to substitute. The simple interest will be my principal is $8,500. The rate of interest in decimal form is 0 0.045, and the time is for six years. If I punch those in a calculator, I'm going to find out that 8,500 times 0 0.045 times six is equal to $2,295. And so that would be the simple interest on this investment. Problem number six is the compound interest formula. It says a is equal to p times one plus r over n to the nt. And the problem says how much money will Cypress have in her account after 10 years if she invests $4,000 at a rate of 6% that is compounded monthly. So let's figure out what the variables mean. a is the amount of money in the account. 
So that's after the investment and the interest. P is the principal. That's what you're investing. And in this problem, it's $4,000. R is the rate at which the interest is being compounded, and so that's 6%, or in decimal form, 0 0.06. N is the number of times that it's compounded within a year, and since this says monthly, N will be equal to 12, since there's 12 months in a year. And T is the time that the investment is for, and in this case, it's 10 years. So now that we know what all the variables are, we'll just substitute. So A is equal to the principal, which is 4,000, that's the amount we invested, times 1 plus, the rate is 6%, and in decimal form, that's 0 0.06, over N, which is the number of times it's compounded in a year, and since this is compounded monthly, it's 12, raised to the N again, that's the same 12, and the time of the investment is 10 years. And so now we just have to simplify according to the order of operations. So we're actually going to start in parentheses like normal. We have the division, 0 0.06 divided by 12. If you punch that in a calculator, you get 0 0.005 plus the 1. That will give you 1.005 times the 4,000 that was the principal on the investment and 12 times 10 is just 120. And so now we have to punch that in the calculator. We'll take 4,000 and multiply it by 1.005 raised to the 120, and we find out that the amount that Cyprus would have in her account is $7,277.59. Problem number seven is the distance rate time formula. It says D equals RT. The problem says Cyprus drove 500 miles in eight hours. What was her average speed for this trip? So we have D, which stands for the distance, is equal to R, which is the rate multiplied by the time. In this problem, it says Cyprus drove 500 miles. That would be the distance, so we'll substitute 500 for D. The rate is what we're looking for, and the time, it tells us it took us her eight hours to drive the 500 miles. So we'll just simplify a little bit. 500 equals r times 8 is 8r. And then we'll solve the equation. We'll divide both sides by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1r, or as some people say, it cancels out. And 500 divided by 8 is 62.5. And so the rate, the average speed for Cyprus's trip, would be 62.5 miles per hour. Problem number eight is the average formula. It says an average is equal to the sum of the items divided by the number of items that there are. And the problem says the number of dog collars produced each day for a week by a local artist to sell at the market were 11, 14, 8, 9, 8, 12, and 15. What was the average number of dog collars produced per day for the week? So to find the average, I'm going to add up each of the number of collars for the days. So I have 11 on Monday, 14 on Tuesday, 8 on Wednesday, 9 on Thursday, 8 on Friday, 12 on Saturday, and 15 on Sunday. And then I'm going to divide that by the number of items, which would be 7, since there's 7 days in a week. And then I'm just going to simplify. The average would be equal to if I punch in a calculator, 11 plus 14 plus 8 plus 9 plus 8 plus 12 plus 15, that turns out to be 77, and 77 will then be divided by 7. So I would find my average to be 77 divided by 7 is 11. So on average, the number of dog collars produced were 11 collars per day. Problem number 9 is the exponential decay formula. It says capital A is equal to lowercase a times 1 minus r to the t. And the problem says the value when Cypress bought her car was $28,000. If it loses 9% of its value on average each year, estimate the value of her car in 15 years. So let's look at what the variables mean. 
Capital A is the value of the car at any time, and in this case we want to know what's the value after 15 years. Lowercase a is the amount that was originally paid for it, which is $28,000. R is the rate on average what it loses, which is 9%, or in decimal form, 0 0.09. And T is the time that we want to know how it depreciates. And so now I'm going to substitute the amount will be equal to the value of the car was $28,000 on purchase times 1 minus the rate it's losing 9% or 0 0.09 on average each year and the time we have here is 15 years. And so now I'm just going to use the order of operations. A would be equal to 28,000 1 minus 0 0.09 would be 0.91 and that would be raised to the 15th power. If I punch that in a calculator, 0.91 to the 15th power times the 28,000 that she originally paid, I would find out in 15 years, the car would be valued at $6,804.23. Problem number 10 is the continuously compounded interest formula. It says A equals PE to the RT. And the problem says, how much money will Cypress have in her account after three years if she invests $4,000 at a rate of 5.5% that is compounded continuously? So when we have interest that's compounded continuously, we use a constant in math known as E. And E is just a number similar to pi is 3.14 approximately. E is about 2.7. But it's an irrational number and there's a bunch of decimal places after that. Your calculator will have a button somewhere for E. It may be in the second level and it may say something like E to the X. So that's the key that you would use. A is the amount of money in the account. P is the principal or the initial investment. In this case it's $4,000. R is the rate which is 5.5% or in decimal form, 0 0.055. And T is the time of the investment. In this problem, it's three years. And so now we're going to plug in. A is equal to, the principal was $4,000, that was the initial investment, times E raised to the R, the rate, which is 0 0.055, times the time of the investment, which is three. And so now we're just going to use the order of operations, simplify, and find our answer. So A would be equal to 4,000 times E, and E will be raised to the, if I multiply 0 0.055 times 3, I get 0.165. And so if I type in my calculator, E raised to the 0.165, and get that answer, multiply that by 4,000, I'll find out that the amount in the account is $4,717.57. So that's it. 10 different formulas in algebra and an example of each one. Keep working hard. Keep practicing. Don't ever give up. If you have any questions that we can help with, type it in the comments and we'll do our best to help you out. And remember, as we say at Math Dogs, you got this.